Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and you are watching the Daily Dose of Hope. Thanks so much for being here. We certainly appreciate your attendance here tonight as we look into the Bible. Now, what does the Daily Dose of Hope do for you? The Daily Dose of Hope, first, obvious, is it exposes you to the Holy Bible, the truth. And that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. We're going to be looking at the truth found in the book of John. And we're going to be in the 15th chapter. In fact, I'm going to spend the next couple days teaching through John chapter 15. And we're going to start at the end of it, the very end of it, John chapter 15. And we're going to be looking at that tonight. And that is... One of the major goals of the Daily Dose of Hope is to connect you with the truth, most importantly, connect you with God. But let's go ahead and bow our heads and ask God to anoint our time together. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty, powerful God. We love you. We praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one and only truth, Lord. We know that, in fact, this world is right now spreading lies like crazy everywhere we turn now there's fake news there's fact checkers uh there's misinformation there's social media posts that are just flat out fake everything seems to be the opposite of the truth but we know that we have the one and only truth in you lord and it's found in your book and it is you so we pray lord that we would look to this truth in times of difficulty, times of trouble, times of making decisions. And Lord, that we would ask you for your will and we would look into your word to find out what your will is. It's one of the things that you instructed us to do, to find out what it is that we should really do. So thank you, Lord, for listening to us as we pray to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through your word. And we want to pray all of this in your Son, the mighty, powerful Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I'm a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are the Daily Dose of Hope. And we invite you now to open your Bible to John chapter 15. We will be in John chapter 15 for two verses. And then we're going to jump over to the book of Acts. Uh, chapter 1, and we'll look at something there to kind of put this whole thing together. So let's go, John 15, verse 26. And I'm titling this The Counselor. Now what is going on here is that uh, Jesus has been teaching here in John 15. Most of you know John 15 as, a, um, as the chapter that talks about Jesus uh, being the vine and were his branches and um, some people that have never studied John 15 think that you can lose your salvation based on what's in John 15, which I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Um, you will never lose your salvation. We believe once saved, always saved here at Hope Hills International Ministry. Now, what we're looking at tonight is Jesus teaching that the Holy Spirit or the Counselor is going to be given. And we want to look at um, what's the purpose of the third person of the Holy Trinity. See, we believe here at the Hope Heals International Ministry, we believe in one God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's known as the Holy Trinity. And so Jesus introduces to his disciples and to others that might be listening he introduces to them someone by the name of the Counselor. And we're going to find out who that is as we go through this. So let's go ahead and open our Bibles to John 15, 26 and 27. And let's begin. When the Counselor comes, Jesus is speaking. When the Counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. You also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Okay, so just two verses, lots of information here. 
And I believe that this is going to be very encouraging to you. Because if you've ever wondered who is the Holy Spirit, why do we have the Holy Spirit, what's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, why is he called a part of the Holy Trinity? Okay, We're going to try to look at some of those answers in these two verses plus the book of Acts. So let's go here, verse 26. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, When the Counselor comes. Now, up until this point in time, um, the disciples have not heard about the Holy Spirit. They've heard about the Spirit, and I think up, in, up until this time, they've heard about the Spirit of Truth before. Uh, but they never heard the word Counselor. So the question comes up is, why did Jesus use that name? Well, that we may never know why he used that specific name. Now, we're using the Holman Christian Study Bible, and the Holman Christian Study Bible is, uh, well, it's pretty close to like a New King James. And so they try to make the, the translation word for word, okay? So when the counselor comes, Jesus says, he says, the one I will send to you from the Father. Now, who's sending the Holy Spirit? Who's sending the Counselor? Jesus Christ. Okay? So Jesus is the one who's going to send the Holy Spirit. Up until this time, the Holy Spirit has not been sent. Okay? The Holy Spirit's always been around since the beginning, since eternity past. But the Holy Spirit has not been sent to the earth. Okay? So Jesus is reminding the disciples, he says, When the Counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father. So who does the Holy Spirit come from? He comes from God the Father. Okay? Just like Jesus is the only begotten Son of God the Father. They come from God the Father. Again, they are part of the Holy Trinity. God the, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're three God, they're one God in three persons. Okay, it's the triune Godhead. Okay, as we say it in the fancy circles of theology, right? And he says, the Spirit of Truth. Now he renames them from Counselor to the Spirit of Truth. Jesus says, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father. Again, He's legitimizing the Holy Spirit. He's letting everyone know at this point in time that the Holy Spirit, God the Son, and God the Father are all equal. Okay? The reason that he says that he's going to proceed from the Father is because the Father is going to be the one who's going to allow Jesus to send him. Okay? He meaning the Spirit of Truth or the Counselor, will testify about me. Okay? And we're going to see this on Pentecost. Okay? If you jump ahead to Acts chapter 2, you can read all about the beginnings of the church in Acts chapter 2, and that's known as Pentecost Sunday. Okay? And that's the beginnings of the church. Okay? Now, Look what happens here in verse 27. Jesus goes on to say, you also will testify. So the Holy Spirit's going to testify about Jesus, and Jesus says, you also will testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Okay, again, he's talking to the disciples specifically here. Now, if you look back in verses like 22 to 25 Jesus is talking about how the world will hate us he's going to hate us the world is going to hate us for what we believe now is that happening here in the year 2021 yes is it going to get worse yes uh is there going to be all kinds of alternatives to god yes <laughs> The world will make up all kinds of alternatives like they have previous to this, okay? There's all kinds of alternatives to the one and only true God. Uh, just look around. There are many different religions 
There are many different cults. Um, today, you've heard me say this study before, but I think it was Christianity Magazine that uh, I think they, I, I can't remember the total number of people that they surveyed, but they surveyed a large number of people that were from the millennial group, okay? The, the, the group that's generally known from the 20s into the 30s, right? The millennials. And they asked the millennials, uh, what do you think about God? And 43% of the millennials said, I don't think about God ever. So the millennials are not agnostic. The millennials are not, um, what do you call it, uh, an atheist. The millennials just don't think of God, period. It's like they're indifferent to God. And will this happen in the next generation and the generation after that? Of course it will. Because what's going to happen is the world is going to find other things that it can focus its attention on than God. Uh, one of the things that's coming up is called transhumanism. That's where you're going to use your device, your, your digital device, and you're going to be Come part, you're going to become part of the digital age. That's right. You're going to become part of the digital age. You're going to become part of, uh, you know, this, this uh, what do you call it, digital world that's out there, okay? This cyber world. And that's the idea of transhumanism. And it's a cult. Uh, they say they're not a cult, but they believe that, uh, they can become the higher power. They don't need a God to be the higher power. So imagine that is going to be the, the next thing that's going to be very, very big. Uh, and it's going to draw more and more young people away from who God is. Again, this is why I tell all of you parents, you need to every single day make sure your parent, your son, your daughter, your grandchildren know that Jesus loves them. If they say, who is Jesus? You need to introduce them to Jesus. Because what's happening right now is the world is, is getting more and more evil and they're pulling more and more away from God. They're pulling more and more people away from God. And at this point in time, they're not, they're not even having to say bad things about God. They're just distracting people. Does that make sense to you? So Jesus says here in verse 27, and this is very encouraging, he said, you too will testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning. Now he's talking to the disciples, but what happened to the disciples? The disciples on Pentecost Sunday, they started speaking in all the languages of the entire world at that time. There were probably 15 or 16 languages, and they started speaking to the entire world on that Pentecost Sunday and Jesus Christ started spreading. Christianity started spreading. And it wasn't to the Jewish world, it was to the Jews and the Gentiles because Jesus kept telling us, and Paul does this in his writings, we become one in God. We are not separate. So what's happening is on Pentecost Sunday, everybody hears the good news in their own language. Now. What about 2,021 years later? Well, we're translating the Bible in as many languages as we can, as quick as we can. There are, there are Bibles in Papua New Guinea, which is south of the, the Philippines, in some of the tribal regions that are still considered cannibals. But their language uh, has... Uh, they have a Bible in their language and they now can read about Jesus Christ and many are getting saved. In China, China is supposed to be a closed country, but the gospel is spreading faster than ever in China. In fact, it's the fastest growing uh, or spread of the gospel in the world. Iran, number two in the world in terms of the spread of the gospel. Afghanistan, been in the news lately. They're number five in the world in terms of the, the gospel being spread. We know that the U.S. soldiers would pass out Bibles uh, during the last four years that Donald Trump was the president. So 
the gospel is being spread, and Jesus predicted, he said, not only will the spirit of truth testify about me, but you also will testify about me. And he was talking to the disciples. They did their part. And then that has been passed on for 2,000 years since then. No one, no one can stop the power of the counselor. Let's look at this in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive your power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. Now, when does the Holy Spirit come on you? He comes on you when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll say that again. He, the Holy Spirit, the counselor, comes on you when you believe in Jesus Christ as a Savior. Once you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you say that with your heart, you say that with your lips, you repent, you some people will say you have to do a sinner's prayer. Some people say that you have to, uh, sp- you know, you have to ask Jesus into your life. The Bible says very clearly you just have to believe in the one and only God, Son of God. And at that point in time, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you, look what it says here, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. This is a quote from Jesus. Okay, wait a minute, Chaplain Bob. Jesus was around during the book of Acts. Yes, remember, Jesus came back after the resurrection and he spent 40 days here on earth, both biblically testified to and historically testified to. And it says here, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In other words, You, the disciples, are going to spread this gospel all over the world. Now, if this was a meaningless message, if the gospel was a meaningless message, and it had, we won't even put in there yet the power of the Holy Spirit. We won't even put in there the divinity behind all of this, the divine power behind all of this. We won't put that in there yet. Let's just say that this message, the gospel, was just meaningless. If it was meaningless, it would be like most messages in the world. They're here today, gone tomorrow, right? The news travels so fast. And uh, from one day to the next day, there's another piece of news, and and yesterday's news becomes old news. In fact, you forget about yesterday's news because you're focused only on today's news. Well, the gospel is not like that. The gospel has stood the test of time. The gospel has been around for 2,021 years. The Bible is about 5,000 years old. Okay? And that's what we believe is the timeline for man on earth. Not billions and billions of earth, of years like uh, they say that, uh, you know, science says. Okay? So, back to our point here. Jesus says... You'll receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. That's when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when you're born again. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's locally, your local city. Okay, that would be like San Mateo. In Judea, which would be like the greater Metro Manila area for me. Okay, in Samaria, which would be like all of the Philippines. Okay. And then in the, to the ends of the earth. And that might be Korea. That might be Tanzania. That might be uh, Brazil. That might be the United States. That might be Sydney, Australia. Okay? Jesus says, this power of the wonderful counselor, the counselor known as the Holy Spirit, known as the Spirit of Truth, this power will allow you to spread this news. So there's the divinity. There's the divine power. See, the gospel should have never, ever made it to 2021. But it's because it's divine. It has the power of the Holy Spirit behind it. So what happens? You can't stop the gospel. Look at 
Some of the most notorious Muslim nations now have the gospel spreading faster than ever. Afghanistan, I mentioned earlier, Iran, Iraq, the Chinese in China, the gospel is spreading very quickly. In fact, I was uh, a few months back, actually over well over a year ago, I was working as a Chinese, I was working in China as an English instructor. Okay, I was doing it through the uh, power of the digital, right? I was teaching uh, Chinese, uh, prestigious Chinese schools, English. And uh, when I got hired, the person that hired me, I can't even remember her name, so I'm not going to not going to worry about saying this online, but the person that hired me said, oh, I see that you're a missionary. And I said, yes. She said, my father was a pastor here in China for over 30 years. In China. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. And she said, no, there are many pastors in China teaching the gospel. Praise God. I got hired in China by a Chinese woman who her father was a pastor by a born-again believer in China. Can you believe that? That's a true story. And so when I asked the question, what can I do when I'm teaching these Chinese students? What, what can I do? Uh, they said, you can do anything you want to do, just never, ever talk about politics. The only thing you can't do, just never, ever talk about politics, but you can do everything you else you want. I said, I can play Christian Music? Yeah, go ahead. We love any kind of music videos. doesn't matter. So I played Christian music, and I put the subtitle up there. I always used lyrics so that they could read them. And their job, I told them while they're standing up and singing, was to sing along and read the lyrics and practice their English. And their teachers loved it. They went along with it. You see, that's the divine power of the gospel, that's the divine power of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is going to testify the truth of Jesus Christ. So the, the Holy Spirit set it up so that I could go online, teach English in China, and play Christian music up on the screen so that all those Chinese students in the elite schools could stand up and practice their English, and instead they were getting the message of the gospel. Isn't that cool? That is the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's found here in John 15 in Acts 1. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for your power. Thank you and praise you for the Counselor, Lord. We thank you for the power that comes from the Counselor. And we thank you, Lord, that he's living inside of us. We praise your holy name that through his power, the power of the Counselor, we can testify to, about you and testify to uh, the world about you. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Okay, some of you are praying for me. Uh, you know that I went to a, uh, I went to my uh, lab work, had lab work done. My doctor and I, my primary care physician and I, decided that it would be a good idea uh, that I had a physical exam six months after my stroke, and I got my results back today, and they look great to me. Everything I've read looks favorable for me. I still wait to have my doctor read them to me. The doctor's the expert. I'm not, I'm not a doctor. Uh, but everything that I was concerned about looks good, so we'll see what the doctor says when I have my appointment next week. So praise God for that. Thank him uh, for what he's done, the favor that he's done. And thank you all for praying for me. I appreciate that. Okay, so that's it for the Daily Dose of Hope here, uh, late night on a Friday night. Thank you so much for being here. I'll be back here tomorrow sometime. I don't know what time yet. Uh, my son is uh, having his final quarter exams tomorrow. He had three today. He has two tomorrow. And I'm his uh, teacher. I'm his. Uh, I'm the one who sits near him uh, during the time that he's in school. And uh, I'll be there tomorrow as he has a final exam in Filipino. And he also has a final exam in mathematics. 
And then I'm supposed to uh, go get a haircut tomorrow because my hair is a little bit bushy. And Andre wants to get a haircut too, so we'll take him with us. And then my son wants to go uh, look for some waterfalls, so we might do that in the afternoon. I'm not sure yet what we're going to be doing. And then on Sunday, uh, I will be here in the morning for Hope Heals Sunday morning gathering. But you can already pray for me on Sunday. I'm doing a baby dedication on Sunday. We're going to dedicate uh, a little baby that was born, I think, four months ago, three months ago, something like that. And I'm excited because I get to share the gospel to a group of people that are about 50% believers, 50% people that don't really know who Jesus is. So uh, pray for me on Sunday that I can share that gospel with as many people as possible. All right, that's enough about me. That's enough about everything that's going on here. God bless all of you. Thank you for being here. We will see you tomorrow at the Daily Dose of Hope. Now, here's a little bit of Skyly Shea shelter from the storm. Here you go. Enjoy. keeps falling and wonder where he is in all this mess he's right there to guide you unseen you're not alone his light shines on the past that we